We are back. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jason Burma sitting in. We're talking to Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster. Dot com, and we're going to take your calls on the topic of the economy. No chupacabras, no spacemen, no Johnny nonsense. Let's keep it to topic. But before that, I want to get your take on the uh, chief economist for the World Bank, uh, Lin, Justin Yifu Lin, saying that if they revalue China's currency, it's going to hurt this country. And we've known this, but let's talk about the implications if it's actually done. Well, since the mid-1990s, <clears throat> the preferred method of keeping down inflation in the United States has been the importation of goods from other countries, but can, particularly from China. I mean, you go in the store, virtually everything in India is made in China. And the slave labor countries were able to deliver cheaper products, and they all suppressed the value of their currencies. No matter what they say, that's what they were up to. And that's where I believe... We need tariffs and goods and services like we used to have in order to set a level playing field if they want to do business in the United States. But the point here is that the Chinese currency is way undervalued. And if they raise it, the exports to the United States will be more expensive. And that's coming at a time when the dollar is expensive and the dollar shouldn't be trading where it's at, uh, whether the euro should be where it's at is up to debate. But the point is the dollar doesn't deserve to be as strong as it is on the USDX index. It just went from 74 up to 85 in a four-month period, uh, which is really insanity. And that means that the balance of payments deficit in the United States is going to skyrocket because they're not going to be able to sell very easily in foreign countries because their currency has gone up in value. So you put the two of them together, and the United States is going to pay dearly for a revaluation or a stronger Chinese currency. Now, what are we talking about here? I mean, how much of our dollar's purchasing power is going to be lost? Are we going to see uh, things raised by 25 percent, 30 percent, perhaps double in price in this country? No. No, I don't think so. I, I would uh, say 5 to 10 percent. So it'll be gradual. They'll hit us up for 5 to 10% right now, and then maybe 5 well, to 10%. Think they really don't want to do that. Okay. Because they would rather imprison the slaves and, and try to make them work for the same amount of money or less and keep the market. Uh, that's really what they're all about. Uh, it's a command economy. It's a communist economy. And it's a totalitarian economy, which everybody seems to forget. I mean, these are the people that we used to chase all over the world and spy on and kill them. And we don't do that anymore. We play ball with them. I mean, what insanity. But anyway, uh, China has got terrible problems. Uh, they have a stock market that's fallen 25% since last September, which incidentally we predicted on this program. And the housing market is a bubble. It's about to blow up. And uh, they still have 30 million unemployed. Uh, the only thing I can see that's good that's happened in China is people are taking their foreign exchange and they're trading it in for gold and silver. However, the working conditions in China are completely deplorable. Go check out Walmart, the high cost of low prices just to see that. But we also have new death at iPhone factory as Chinese worker becomes eighth fatality this year. And they always keep this hush hush. They say the people that die are often committing suicide. But just a month ago, we ran the story in which Microsoft's subsidiary company there, everybody was asleep. There was about I don't know, 30, 40 uh, workers in there, and they're working them 14-hour shifts, seven days a week. Some of these people just can't handle it. I cannot imagine a system like China coming into the United States where we're literally slaves of the political elite, the workforce. I, I just can't tell you how deplorable it is there. And then you have people promoting China like it's the best thing since breakfast, Bob. And like you said, we've been trading with them now openly for 20-plus years and really in encouraging this behavior. That's right. And so what does it say about our government? I think we could call it corporatist fascist. It's just two types of socialism, and they seem to be getting along fine, as long as it lines the po pockets of the wealthy transnational conglomerates and the members of Congress and the elites 
who uh, give orders to our government and most governments in the world. Yeah, and I briefly cover this in my latest film, Invisible Empire, A New World Order Defined, when I'm going over the Bush senior era of a quote-unquote new world order. We go to a Senate hearing where Joe Biden, Chris Dodd, and others are asking James Baker about China and its role in what? Oh, the new world order, because that's what George Bush was talking about. He was talking about China's role in the new world order, and James Baker says, look, this is a nation we're going to have to work with because because of their size and because of their economy, we just don't have a choice. We're going to go to some calls for Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster.com right now. Ron in Illinois. Ron, you're on the line. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. I, uh, Invisible Empire, awesome film. Just wanted to put, throw that out there for you guys. Thank you. Uh, before I get into my question for Bob, I wanted to also say for any of you guys uh, out there in Florida, there's a guy by the name of Bruce Ray Riggs. Uh, you can find him at 30 Uncle Sam. He's running for Senate. Good constitutionalist guy. You should check him out. Okay. Uh, Bob, my question is, do you guys, do you know any rumors circling around about the possibility of, you know, with everybody finding out about uh, what the Federal Reserve's doing and uh, wanting to end the Fed, that there could be a shift into a possible split paradigm, like something under, like a corporate treasury under the government itself, and then just shifting power into what's called the United States Treasury, only a corporate body of it. Uh, I haven't heard that. I don't think they're attempting to do that as far as I know, uh, although it would be something that they would consider, I would think. Um, one of the things that I did not mention today is my sources in uh, New York City tell me that a class action suit, of one of many, is coming against J.P. Morgan Chase for rigging the silver market. And uh, that ought to be quite interesting uh, because that's exactly what they've been doing. And I think the defense is going to be uh, we did it for the U.S. government under the working group for financial markets. And uh, uh, maybe they'll get off the hook on it, but they're going to have to stop it. So it's going to be a big plus for us. And there are an awful lot of other lawsuits against them and other uh, big firms uh, of different kinds uh, related to fraud. All right, let's go to our next caller, Chris in Florida. You're on the line with Bob Chapman. Oh, uh, yeah, Jason, you're talking about the iPad where they're not accepting uh, cash anymore, and mm -hmm. I wanted to run this by Bob and, and have another question. Uh, is that uh, There's the uh, t tender of payment gov governed under the Uniform Commercial Code 3-603, so that uh, it seems to specify there under paragraph 2 that if you do tender payment and they refuse that tender, then your obligation is discharged, and perhaps that could be a way that we could um, use to preserve our right to uh, pay cash. Um, now, the, uh, the definition of lawful money I noticed recently was repealed back in January 2009. It was in Title 12, Section 152 that says that uh, the terms lawful money and lawful money of the United States shall be construed to mean gold and silver coin of the United States. And uh, I was wondering if Bob had any news on that, because it seems like it had something to do with the FDRs uh, replacing lawful money. Bob? Well, I think, I think they'd like to do that, but I don't, under the, under the circumstances in the world right now, I don't see anybody accepting anything that doesn't have some goal backing. And the SDRs have no goal backing. They tried them in the late 60s. They didn't work. Uh, they've been trying them again recently. They're never going to work. Uh, the only thing I can see that's workable is a G20 has a meeting. Uh, they index all the currencies into a giant index. Uh, they'll be weighted uh, versus the value of the uh, the country involved, uh, what their rating is, and they use that for an international currency for international trade only. And I, I see that as doable. Other than that, I, I see nothing beyond that. I mean, these people on the inside are in deep trouble. 